Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. I'm making a diver propulsion vehicle. Actually, let me back up just a bit and show you how I got to this point. So the first thing I'm doing here is laying out my parts to see how long this body tube is going to need to be. It looks like it's about 19 inches total with these two batteries here. Unfortunately, they won't stand up inside a four inch pipe, so I got to lay them down, which makes the whole thing longer. Six inch pipe was simply too expensive and their fittings I needed weren't available. So plus this end cap here, I'm a little bit longer now. Uh, I need about two inches on the front here, maybe. So about like that, I think for the batteries. Okay, and then the motor's gonna go back here. I got a lot of little space for that and its mounts. So I'm a little longer. This is gonna go near the back. I think I'm gonna put this, uh, let's see here. Let's, this one, this is gonna go in there. Nope, uh, that could go on like that. But then I got it drilling, that'll be tough. So this one, I think, and then just a solid end cap like so, and then I can drill a hole through that for the shaft right there in the middle. Okay, then this whole assembly, the motor will go in there, and it's got some room for the chuck and stuff, so that'll be nice. So here I'm using my lathe to find the exact center of this before I drill it. Now, of course, you could do this without a lathe, but I, this is the one little flourish I did on this project. The whole point of this project was to show you you can build a scuba scooter out of the basic tools. And the shaft to go like so, that's a... That's a little tight, better go one size up. So here it is kind of all laid out. I've, I've still got to build a motor mount for the front end. And I'm not cutting this on a miter saw. I'm doing it here in a miter box to show you you can do this with basic tools. Okay, got that through. I'll have to kind of deburr some of that, but not bad. And so now this is all gonna go somewhat like this. Still need that motor mount for the front end. All right, that looks pretty good. My batteries will go in, laying down there. I wish I could put more, but this, I mean, there's an ultimate link to how long this thing could reasonably be, and I'm already there, so. All right, about like that, okay. Then this pressure testing plug here goes in the end. Thank you, extra set of hands, appreciate it. Okay, tighten that real nice, and that's gonna keep the water out, and then we need to cover that with an end cap so it looks pretty, like so. And obviously this needs to be removable. We can't glue this on, so that's going to go like that. All right, that's not bad. And the shaft spins. Cool. Now, the next thing I got to do is figure out how to get the handles on. Um, so I'm cutting these handle pieces here. Once again, just PVC pipe. Nothing special here. My assistant... My assistant cuts them in the miter box. Oh, and he's pleased, as am I. This is one inch schedule 20. It was a lot cheaper than the 40, and I just, I needed the extra room to hold switches. So that's gonna go like that. Nice and, uh, I didn't want stray handles. That would have been boring, right? So this is gonna go like this. That's gonna go like that. Then I need to cut some little pieces to join them in the middle where your actual hands would go. Okay, that looks pretty good. And about nearly three inches for these pieces here. And there it is. So now I've got to attach this thing. This switch was a pain to get in there, but I think I got it. Now I'm gonna fill it full of uh, silicone once I get this waterproof. Now this is not a waterproof switch, but for proof of concept, I think it'll work. And then here I'm contouring this with a hole saw so that these can sit nicely on the body tube. After this, I'll use the next size up and it should be just about right. There we go. Okay, get that. And this little jig here, this is my motor mount. This makes sure I have a perfect inside diameter for the motor mount so that it's centered inside the tube. It's simply a bolt down through the center here on this piece of wood that slides back and forth. And against my Alex sander, I can rotate it like so and end up with a perfectly circular outer section. And it squeezes in just like that. All right, cool. Now I've got to drill the hole for the motor. Nice. Look at that. A simple slot, pinches it in, and there's the motor, perfectly centered. That was done with a hole saw, of course. And now I can shove that in there here in a minute and stick my tail cap on. A bunch of grease, I hope, in the center, in this end cap, is going to keep the water out. And you can see my contoured handle, just like so. That's not bad. I'm gonna try to glue this on with the PVC cement, but I don't think it's gonna work. 
Uh, my one necessary hole for the switch wires. 18 gauge zip cord up in there like so. I'm gonna use this silicone to hopefully keep the water out. I'm not worried about this, this should be just fine. Now the handle is probably gonna get water in it because the switch isn't watertight, but I don't really care. We're low volts DC and it shouldn't affect anything. A whole bunch of purple primer, trying not to make a mess of course, and we'll glue this all up. Not sure where my assistant went. Somewhere. Oh well, this isn't terribly interesting and he makes a worse mess than I do. Okay. I don't think this is gonna work. Yeah, there's just not enough surface contact area here for the purple primer and the cement to hold these on, but hey, let's give it a shot here. I got nothing to lose. Worst case scenario, I put a couple screws in there and seal them up. So, I'm gonna put a little extra here, slide that back, get on my contact area there. Like, I, I really don't think this is gonna work but why not try it? I'm do the same thing to the bottom. Get it nice and centered here. Make sure it's straight. I certainly don't want this thing cocked. My OCD would not have it any other way. That looks pretty good. Yep, about there. Okay. And let's just put a little more cement on here for good measure on the back and the front. This really won't have much of an effect, but I'm doing it anyway. There's a 5% chance it might. Okay, and get it up in the front here. This is not the ideal applicator, but that's what I got, so. Alrighty. We'll see how that does. Probably not well. It didn't. So, plan B, drilling holes. Two in the top, two in the bottom. These holes here, these screws secure the motor mount so it can't slide around in there. And you can see this handle didn't stick at all. Looks awful. I gotta clean this up and then I'm gonna screw it down. But I can go ahead and purple prime and cement the end cap for the shaft. So I'm gonna do that. I'm concentrating very hard. So I'm not speaking out loud. And I can put my tail cap on here. Always give your pipes a little bit of a turn to smear that cement around there nice. Down to that line I drew. Perfect. All right. I like that. And same thing here with the end cap. Purple primer, cement, and stick this grease ball down in there. I didn't have any way to put O-rings or cut an O-ring groove inside of this, so this grease should work though. And even if water gets in, it's no big deal. We're 12 volts DC. We might get a little corrosion long term, but short term, this will work just fine. Not concerned. And time to anchor the handle. Plan A didn't work, so here's plan B. Two screws in each one. These electrician's machine screws, the 632s, these are gonna work great. I won't have to seal these, I don't think, because I drilled the holes so tight that they'll just uh, seal themselves. That worked, well, that's pretty solid. I'll do the other side here. Stick this on, prime it, cement it, and screw it. Now I'm going to need to add ballast to this at some point because I know it's going to float like crazy even with the lead acid batteries, but that's later. I can always stick some lead sticks inside the body tube. Like that. Is it, you have to push hard or is it float? Let go. I'm, what happens? It floats. Okay. All right. Go ahead and flip it over uh, and go ahead. Like pull. that? Oh, that, you're right. It's on the top. That's on the top. Okay, so. All right, I'm go ahead and pull the trigger and see if anything happens. Oh, oh yeah. gosh, Okay, stop. Fast. Let go. Let go. It's going fast. All right then. You hold on and you head out to the deep. Point it the way you want to go, and you hold on and go. Let it pull so you. how do I... Oh, so it pulls? No. The prop is next to you. The prop goes back. Because I don't have a prop guard on yet. That goes pretty quick. Alrighty. It's now, the one flourish cool. here, of course, is the 3D printed prop. Can you hold it out in front of you and let it pull you through the water? Well, it's okay, going, but trigger. that's... That's disappointing. Hey, look at that. Not entirely. I mean, it's only a 4-inch 3-blade prop with an 8-inch pitch. So let's uh, let's step that up here. Here's an eight inch prop with an eight inch pitch and four blades. That should do better. I've got it wired backwards here for safety so that the prop can be out front for now. I have to kick to stay under, but this thing goes pretty darn fast. I like this, this is much better. So, proof of concept works. It still floats even with three pounds of weight on it, so I need to add a little more.
Well, you can see that works pretty well for a prototype made out of PVC pipe and basic tools. I'm definitely now gonna go ahead and go with version two and make this thing even better. Uh, that's definitely not gonna be PVC pipe though, because I need to shape it and make it a little bit more, uh, I, I need to size it for the batteries that I've got. Since they're giant rectangular blocks, I gotta do something similar. But this is something you can definitely do yourself, just don't be afraid to give it a try. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.